Come on, y'all. All right, now, come on now. strengthened our souls and gave us a message, message to run on. At this time, I want you to put your hands together with love. Put your hands together with joy. And put your hands together with peace and receive our lead, our lead sermon for this service right now. Put your hands together for Pastor Sean Robinson. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Us. 
Elder and Pastor, I love you guys. Thanks again. Much love to Jay and Tony for providing a space for brothers to come. That fellowship, the hope that brothers lead, empower and encourage. This weekend has been amazing for me and I hope it has been for you. Amen? Amen. To the other brothers that are behind the scenes, we see you. And I'm grateful to stand before you. I'm honored that you actually took time out of your Sunday to show up. I heard y'all had an amazing time last night. I'm so sorry. Did I miss something? It's okay to go out and hang out and be in service on Sunday. The theme is free to me. Right now with this down because when I said I heard y'all had a good time, they were solid. <laughs> now either you need to wake up, or I'm gonna need you to get free. Uh oh, watch it now. Now I'm going to try to move forward without keeping you long. I recognize recognize that many of you probably haven't had breakfast. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want you. I'm so with you. <laughs> so I'm assuming that that brother will keep the time. So if you see him looking at his watch, I can't see you out there because of these lights, but I need somebody in the front row to give me a wave. Is that all right? <laughs> I'm going to start off by re reading our Bible affirmation. This affirmation is what blessed and freed me in so many ways. I, uh, My pastor and bishop believe that we must... Read this affirmation each and every time we stand behind a podium to minister to the people. I am not going to ask you to recite it. I'm just going to ask you just to listen to it. Is that fair? It goes like this. This is my Bible. It contains basic instructions before leaving earth. It is a primary resource in the development of my relationship with God. While I believe it is inspired by God, I need you to catch this. It is not God. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. It is not to be used as a weapon. Woo! That part. But as an instrument of liberation in life. I will pray over it as I study it and I will interpret it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit within. I have to write to question it. Yes. As I apply his teachings to my life. My heart is open. My mind is alert. I am ready to receive a word from the Lord. This is what we do in my church. We affirm resources that will promote us to a different way of thinking. Other than believing what other people have preached from and with this particular resource that has hindered us from moving forward as a community. And I wanted to make sure that you heard that. Next year, I hope to be able to, and, and that was written by Dr. Reverend Jamie Washington, who was my pastor. I honor him and Bishop Thomas today at Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore. Um, and I hope that maybe next year we will um, be able to get something um, to hang or with that Bible information. I believe in, in uh, changing the way that we see things. Amen? Amen. The scripture is going to come from John 8, 31 to 38. It's I'm in the Message Bible, and I'm going to read to you because I'm sure you have your electronic Bibles with you, and I'm sure you're going to be reading, yes? yes? So I'm going to tell you that it's from the Message Bible. I know many of you enjoy the King James, but I enjoy many of them. And I will offer that you, uh, when you get some time, to consider reading other versions. Is that fair? Amen. It goes like this. Then Jesus turned to the Jews who had claimed to believe in him. If you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourself the truth, and the truth will free you. Surprise, they said, but we are the descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone, and how can you say the truth will free you? And Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly that anyone who chooses a life. Now, the Bible says sin, but again, we get to what? Question and change. So I will use the word destruction or disturbance. So anyone who chooses a life of distraction and disturbance is trapped in a dead end life and is, in fact, a slave. Hmm. A slave is transient, and we 
can't go or, or who can't go and will go at their will. The son, though, has to establish position, the run of the house. So if the son sets you free, if they tell you, he's talking about Jesus, you are free through and through. I know you are Abraham's descendants, but I also know that you are trying to kill me because my message hasn't yet penetrated your thick skulls. Lord, fall fresh, God, and move me, Lord, and allow this message to fall fresh on the people. Amen. So now most theologians will use this text as a, as a way to look at discipleship and as the truth that will set folks free. Also, I recognize that this is Palm Sunday, and as I told you, I am considered to be, as this brother called me the other day, a very extreme Christian, <laughs> which Jesus died for. Huh. And so this year theme for BBP is free to be. Not many words, but powerful as it leads me to believe that the promoters of BBP intentionally consider some sort of freedom from something for our community. There is some sense or some idea that many in our community must be liberated from something. Often when we think of freedom, our minds quickly go to slavery and injustice and racism. We cling and hold on to the images and stories from our history and our past. We think about the struggles of our people and how they were held captive and hostage, owned and, and worked by and for someone else. We remember how they were forced to do things against their will and how they were raped or beaten. We could quickly think about how our ancestors was ripped from the homeland and how they were hung. And our minds quickly go to those images and videos of people fighting for a seat at the counter or, or being able to just walk through the front door. We consider the marches and the raids and we remember how they slammed the people to the ground and turned the fire hoses to our families. I'm not quite sure if you understand what I'm talking about. And during those times, we can only imagine what freedom looked like through their eyes. Is there freedom that they sought after the same freedom that you seek today? And if I had to put a title to the sermon, it would be to check your freedom. Ah. Will the freedom of our ancestors, what they want to be enough for you today? And, and I'm sure if I had to pick cotton and didn't have enough food, that perhaps my freedom would look like a hot shower or, 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 no, or no work at all or, or perhaps three cheeseburgers, all of which today many under the sound of my voice can quickly have access to. See, they were singing, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be, you know the song, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. I cannot imagine what risking my life to die for my freedom. We have no idea what that must have been like for them. So I ask the question, what does your freedom look like? Free to be what? Free from what? What is in you that has you outside of complete freedom? Have you even thought about your own slave experience? Do you even believe that you are a slave? And again, it was drilled in us to believe that slaves were only at the bottom of the boat from Africa or the cotton fields in the south, maids and butlers. That's what we've been told. That's what we have seen. That's what we know slave to be. And how can I be a slave to anything or anyone? So I ask you to check. Your freedom. Turn to your neighbor and say, check your freedom. Check your freedom. So man. perhaps we should take time and figure out what we are enslaved to. And I'm talking about the stuff that keeps us from reaching our joy and our happiness. And a complete understanding of oneself. What is it? Are you enslaved to time, work, family, friends, drugs, drama, sex, ego, reality TV? What are you enslaved to? Your history, your parents, the church. Huh. That old relationship, overeating, shopping, strippers, smoking and lying. What is having you from reaching true freedom? What has you wasting away in fields of destruction, dissatisfying, chaotic, and unfulfilling life? What has you halted at the door that you prayed and asked that God opened up for you? What has you held high, suspended in guilt and shame that deters you from your heart's desire? Is it the greed? Is it the bitterness? Is it the insecurity? Is it the death? Your status? Or is it depression? What caused you to make whack and unhealthy decisions throughout your life? Check your freedom. What is it that has you walking around looking like the walking dead, searching for someone to hold to hoping it will lift you out of the pit of unhappiness and an unflattering, gloomy life? 
What is it that you seek freedom from? Make no mistakes. Don't for once think that you aren't enslaved to something. Can I get an amen there? Is it fear put on by your failures or the disappointment? Is it the voice in your head? I, I love the fact that the gentleman that was doing the workshop the other day made reference to the voice in your head that is created as we grow up. Is it that voice that tells you that you can or you messed up? Truth is whatever category you classify your slavery and the result is the same. A fell and missed opportunity to thrive and experience an abundant life. God wants us to thrive and live an abundant, full, and bliss life. And by the way, here's a quick nugget that I want to share with you. Using our ancestors' definition of freedom as the standard for what is, unex what is acceptable is unacceptable. Your freedom cannot be based on theirs or anyone else's freedom. So you got to get yourself together and track, check your own freedom. Here in the scripture in John 8, and I uh, 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 applaud you to please go and read it. Some of them, uh, Jesus is here having a conversation with a group of people, and some of them were actually trying to set this dude up to be arrested. Here Jesus is attempting to share with the people about believing and trusting in God. He makes it clear that he is the light of the world. He proclaims that he knows where he comes from and where he is going. There seems to be nothing that attaches to Jesus that prevents him what? from moving forward. He makes it clear that living in truth is the key to true freedom. The true freedom that is one is a spiritual versus an outward circumstances. Jesus is proclaiming freedom not to be an individual destruction or a specific act of disobedience, but he offers us to adapt his teachings and understanding so that you won't be enslaved to anything. However, these jokers had considered themselves to be slaves to no one and couldn't wrap their minds around the idea that they needed to be free because they were the, de the descendants from Abraham. Like, surely you can't be talking about us. Do you know who we are? And I believe that there's a lot of people in here that when we talk about free to be, that you might believe that you don't need to be free from something. Well, I ask you just to actually take a minute and ask yourself, Seek out what do you need to be free from? Right. Do you even know? The people here, the Jews were saying, Jesus, we know where we are, where we come from. And I can only imagine Jesus who have a higher level of understanding that many will never get to turn or I believe that Jesus actually looked at them with a side eye and said, do you not believe that you are enslaved? Because the last time I checked, and of course this isn't written, but I believe that Jesus would have said something like this. Are you not, were you not enslaved in Egypt and Babylon and also by the Romans? So we are enslaved to something. Jesus was trying to convey that freedom is not about changing anything out there. The freedom is about changing and unleashing your soul from bondage caused by decisions and circumstances from our past. It's about freeing your soul to soar towards the greatness that you are destined to have ordained to be and have. Jesus offered that true freedom through knowing you are God and that God will never abandon you is the truth. And so let's get clear about why we are still choosing from the bottom shelves. Let's get clear about why we are complacent with people that we continue to sleep and be with. Let's get clear about why we are not applying for those high profile jobs. Come on now. Let's get clear about why we haven't forgiven them for what they did to us hmm. in the past. Let's get clear about what it is that held or has us high bondage, suspended from the reality of true freedom. Let's get clear about why we don't speak up. Let's get clear about why we still in the same position that we were last year. Let's get clear about what keeps us oppressed. What has our self-esteem which causes us to engage in unhealthy situations and risky behavior? What has us showing up unloving? And so how do we dig deeper to discover the truth and the clarity? And so here this weekend we've been hanging out and partying and drinking. Uh-huh. Come on. I love when I get into a group of people who just, perhaps that's the part that we need to be free from. The truth. 
you do know that Jesus had tons of drinks. Jesus enjoyed wine. The people enjoy wine. But because we have been instilled with so much oppression that we can't see past living a joyful and amazing life. And so how do we how do we get clear? And so what I want you to do, I'm going to give you, I actually had two points, but as I was in here, I ended up writing down my third point. Bless God, bless God. So what I want you to do is I need you to sit still. We have to determine what is holding us back from our heart's desires and the full potential of our power. We must begin to take inventory. Check inventory. Say inventory. Inventory. And name all the stuff that has us enslaved that we have to really sit with and attempt to understand the root and the cause within. What is it that our soul is captive and why is it? We have to make this a priority and a critical process in our, in our everyday living. Our freedom isn't the same. Check your freedom. To actually discover how your freedom looks for you will take you to do some real work. Now get this, I understand that in digging deeper into self-awareness that it may cause some stuff to actually come out. It will be uncomfortable. It will make you vulnerable. But if you just hold on and trust and believe that it will move you to an understanding that will never have you bound by anything or anyone. Sit still. You must spend time with the truth. You have to get intimate. And oftentimes, we like to get intimate. Yeah. Okay. You got a quiet group. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if it's because I'm not hooping and hollering or if I'm touching on something. We like to get intimate with outward situations and circumstances. We, we, we like to get something external and be intimate with it. Whether you are intimate with another person, whether you are intimate with another brother or friend, whether it's intimate with the bottle. Come on now. Whether it's intimate with the weed. Oh. Or whether it's intimate with the food. Mm, right there. Intimate with the money. Intimate with the car. But when do you spend time with the truth? When do you look at your truth in you? And I don't have any of the other stuff that I named to be bad because you are doing the best that you can at what you know at that very moment. Did you get that? You are doing your very best at what you know at that very moment. Come on now. And so how do you move to a better way of understanding the truth in you? You have to do the work. And that will require you to sit still. Sit still. And your goal should have a full opportunity. You want to live and have the chance to live an effective and to get to your potential of happiness. And it is impossible if you keep moving forward, if you keep running, if you keep doing this, to occupy your mind from really sitting with the truth. Sometimes you have to have intercourse. I heard a preacher tell me that other way that you have to have intercourse with the truth. Mm. Teach that one. Now teach that one. And so we all know intercourse. We all know how we combine. Hello, somebody. We all know. And that's how you have to look at the truth in you. Sit still. Examine. Our goal is to live without being hindered. The second thing I want you to do is I need you to trust yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. We are of God. I'm going to lose some people right here. You can pray for them right now. Created and made in God's image. Mm -hmm. who, shall, who shall we fear as God is our source of our strength and will continue to guide and direct us once we allow our souls the true freedom it needs. I believe that the true freedom will cause the connection within yourself needed to have you be the light of the world. Ha! Ha ha Right there! Now, I know that that might be hard for you and I know that it may insinuate that you are somehow Someone. like Jesus. Come on and like teach. God. See, true freedom will move you to knowing that you are unlimited. Right. 
Somebody should have shot her right there. Right there. Come on now. Somebody should have shot her right there. Because I'm sure that before you came here, that you never thought that you could be unlimited. Come you on. You know what that means. Yeah. We're talking about free, free to be. That means there's no restrictions. Yeah. Come on right? now. So nobody may not have told you about the power that's inside you. Yeah. Somebody may not have shared with you that you get to tap into the Come on and teach Lord, this thing. The light of the world in you. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, there's all kind of lights walking around. Around. And get this, many of you are thinking that Jesus is coming back. Come on and teach it now. Go down that road. Already been here. Ha! Back right there. Jesus is here. There's Jesus in him. The love right there. is the truth. And so while you thinking that this individual who's going to wake up one day or fall from this space that we've never been, uh huh. What I will invite you to trust the light in you. Come on now. There is nothing that you cannot accomplish. True freedom. It will allow you to unleash yourself towards high consciousness. Those who abide in love abide in God and God in them. Pay attention. If God is love and we have love, what makes you believe there is a separation between you and God? We are of God, and we have the source of power that allows us to reach what we can't see nor touch. This is what Jesus died for. Jesus was telling you that you are the light of the world. Right, Jesus right. Jesus is the example, and I know that people are trying to tell you to be just like Jesus. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's absolutely impossible. Say it. I've got three claps, and I'm all right with come that. Come on, come on. Because I'm sure that you're going to leave here and somebody's going to tell you you need to be a Christian, a good Christian. <laughs> it's hard being a Christian. Do you not think Jesus didn't have moments? Hmm. Do we understand the... Okay, right, right there, right there. Truth go right there. So if you get clear about your life, then what comes after free to be will be unlimited. You can be free to do whatever, free to be whatever. Free to be a, 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 a doctor, free to be a lawyer, free to be, free to just be. Ha! Ha! Ha ha! Free to just be. Check your freedom. And don't you worry about what my freedom is. Hello, somebody. Because you may be the light that I need in order to lead me where I need to go. But if you don't sit still, oh. well. if you don't sit still, if you don't trust your power, then your light is not going to shine. Which leads me into this third point that I appreciate the Lord dropping in my spirit. I need you to take people inventory. I need you to, I need you to check your people inventory. What well, does that mean? Well, you? Well. I need you to check who you hanging out with. Woo! I need you to check to make sure that if they're not free, then that's not what you can be near. Hello, you need to start hanging around some people that you want to be like. Right. Right there. Come on now. You need to be around some other lights. One of the things I love about a magnet, I think I heard this on the TV this morning, it wasn't as really interesting. <laughs> a magnet that attaches to any type of iron does what? It sticks. It sticks. I need you to walk around with your freedom so that it can stick. I need you to be an example <laughs> so that when people see your light, then they will want to be like that light. Right. So whatever you free to be, I need you to check the people that are hanging around with you. I need you to find people with like mind. I need you to stop hanging around those that are less than you because it makes you feel good. Because that is oppression. Well. That is preventing you from moving forward. Well. Whatever is in your past is in your past. Your past can, be, can come and show up in a lot of people. Which is why do you think you take the same people over and Woo! over? Right there. Why do you continue to attract and connect to those type of people that don't serve you no good? Come on now. Check your people inventory. God is calling you to a different state. And while this is a vehicle for us to be empowered and encouraged, it cannot be the only one. Ha! Right there. Right there now. 
You can't come here and be free and then leave tonight or tomorrow and be stuck right back to the position where you was enslaved to something. Whether it's enslaved to your family, whether it's enslaved to your child, whether it's enslaved to that better relationship. Whatever it is, you cannot leave here because get this, once you know the truth, well, the truth will annoy you. Huh. So it will disrupt you. Right. It will disrupt your life. Because you will begin to see the truth in every single thing. And then you do get to choose whether or not you want to ignore the truth. But I promise you, ignoring the truth will have you held hostage. In your mind, you yourself will be the corporate that holds you hostage. And so while you can go to church all you want and you can listen to all the preachers on TV and listen to all the audio books that you want. Uh. But if you don't set yourself free, then you will never be the light. Until you get clear about the spirit of the Lord in you and that you're called and ordained to do great work. Well, There's nothing that you cannot do. There is nothing that you cannot get through. See, the truth, when you sit still, when you trust yourself, and when you start checking people around you, when the storms come, <laughs> you will already be clear. I promise you, storms will continue to come. Well. But it's all about how you are prepared. And so you have to continue to stay ready so you don't have to, to get, get ready. ready. Well.